Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Fabulous Concert Programs, number 98. Oh, my goodness. No, 99. What am I talking about? Forget 98. We just did 98. 99, devoted to the American neoclassicists. And as some of you mentioned, well, maybe because I used Barber in the last one, that he was sort of neo-romantic. I don't split hairs about these things. If they use traditional harmony and they write in traditional forms and it's like, you know, after the the 12 note, whatever that thing was, interruption, then I call it neoclassicism. And that's me. It's my definition. And I'm sticking to it. It's useful for what we're going to be doing. So this program contains four works like most of these programs. And oh, what wonderful music is in here. I've been having such a great time listening to all this stuff back and forth on the train, you know, going to work and coming home. And it's been, it's been just, just delicious. Absolutely fabulous. We begin with David Diamond, Symphony Number no. 1. Now, a lot of you have mentioned David Diamond because, you know, Delos did some of his stuff, which later appeared on Naxos with Gerard Schwartz and the Seattle Symphony. There is not enough Diamond out there or a, a systematic treatment of his music because he was a first-rate composer. He was a bit wacky as a person, I must say. I mean, I met him in his elderly phase. And, you know, you know, looking at somebody who's like, you know, in their 80s and is wearing makeup and it was... He was, he, was, he was an odd duck, let me put it that way. And the fact that he was gay had nothing to do with it. He was an odd duck by, by anyone's standards, but a brilliant composer and, and a fun guy. I mean, he was around for like everything in the 20s. He loved to dish dirt on everyone. I mean, you can find some interviews with him on YouTube where he's doing some of that. You get a sense of just how much personality he had. And his music has that personality too. The first symphony is the essence of American neoclassicism, if you really are strict in your definition of neoclassicism. It is bouncy and full of rhythmic energy and and sort of melodic character and oh my gosh, it's 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 compact and it, it does it does everything you expect one of those works to do. It's incredible fun. It's only like twenty two minutes long or so. So it makes a wonderful concert opener. After that, something completely different William Grant Still, his tone poem, Africa. Now, this was actually, for a while, he wrote it in 1930, um, one of his more popular pieces, to the extent he had more popular pieces. And nowadays, you know, we talk about him as a symphonist because he wrote five symphonies. Um, and, you know, those are not what I would consider to be, you know, his major, more major pieces, although they're good works. But they're, they're, they're somewhat reserved and rather rather short and, you know, kind of reserved in style, let's put it that way. Although they all sound like still, and I like them, I enjoy them, I play them all the time. But uh, Africa is a big three movement tone poem. Each of the movements has a title, land of peace, land of romance, land of superstition. It's kind of like, you know, the Mavlast for Africa, even though he wasn't, still was not from Africa, of course, he was you know, as American as, as anybody. But it's a wonderful, wonderful work. It was premiered in its full orchestral version, there's a chamber music version too, um, by Howard Hansen with the Eastman Rochester Orchestra of all people. So there you go. And still is such a neglected character. He wrote so much good music, oh my word really marvelous. And if you like Gershwin and those, you know, that school, Don Gillis and all this, you're going to love William Grant still. And you're going to love Africa. It is evocative and gorgeous and makes a fabulous way to end the first half of the program. Then we all take off for intermission and we come back with another novelty, which I really strongly recommend you listen to. It's George Antile's Serenade Number no. 2. Now, the serenades have been recorded a couple times. The first is for strings and the second is for larger orchestra. And oh my gosh, what a masterpiece this thing is. And again, it, it doesn't sound like anyone else. It's recognizably American, whatever that means. Um, it's brilliantly, brilliantly written and full of just tunes and sounds and juxtapositions of texture and, and harmony. I, I don't know, it doesn't sound like anyone else. That's all I can say. Antile, of course, is famous for having written the ballet mechanique 
back in Paris in the 20s or whatever it was, he was considered the bad boy of music, which was not, uh, I think, um, a title that he was all that uh, fond of because later in his career, he gave up bad boyism and became a really an American neoclassicist. He wrote a lot of kind of populist, almost socialist, realist music, but good stuff, good quality stuff. His symphonies have been recorded, um, all of them. I believe all of them. There are five because number two was withdrawn. So there's there were six numbered symphonies, but five extant works plus some other stuff. I mean, he wrote things and withdrew things, and his his catalog is not tidy, but they've been recorded twice by Chandos and by CPO, um, and other people too. There's some on Naxos. He's gotten a lot of attention lately, and deservedly so. There are also a lot of short orchestral works, overtures, and other things. But the serenades are really pretty special. They're 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 marvelous, and there's a wonderful recording of number two on CPO with like the Württemberg Orchestra or somebody like that. And it's terrific. So after the Antile second, Bernstein's Symphony Number no. 2, The Age of Anxiety. I just love it. I think it's wonderful. But aside from its delicious, you know, uniqueness as a work, I mean, it's one of Bernstein's great pieces. I like it on this program because we need something that's concerto-like. And the second symphony is a symphony concertante with a major part for solo piano. And I like in this program the way the piano kind of emerges because there's a nice piano part in the Antile Serenade too, which sometimes takes a small solo billing. So the piano's already there and you just sort of move it around a little bit, bring it to the front and voila, you have the Age of Anxiety, which ends tremendously in a big optimistic Tam Tam crashy thing. It's it's just it's just sensational. And so we would be in excellent shape if we throw that in there as well. And we have one really cool and incredibly diverse program of American approachable, tonal, mostly, yeah, sort of neoclassical, sort of neo-romantic, neo, a neo fest. And I think you're all gonna really like it, at least at home, because we will, as usual, never hear this program live or any of the music in it or much of the music in it. The Bernstein does get done once in a while. So there you go. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.